Hi guys, Nada here and today we're going to continue with the RTX graphics card party with this RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio from MSI. It is a big and bulky 3 fan 3 slot card with a lot of RGB and it is supposed to keep the power hungry RTX 3080 nice and cool and quiet. If you want to learn more about the chip itself, I did a review of the Founders Edition yesterday and you can go and check that one out. I'll leave a link up here. Because in this video, I'm not going to cover every single new thing NVIDIA is doing, but just focus on this MSI design and how it compares to other cards I had a chance to test so far. So the previously mentioned NVIDIA's Founders Edition, as well as the Tough card from Asus. I am not exactly sure what the exact price of this card will be, but I expect these higher end versions to cost a little bit more than the $700 or 720 euro base price of the Founders Edition. Uh, so let's start. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable, and my go-to choice for most of my test tricks and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. All right, so let's start with the obvious thing here. The RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio is a really big GPU. It is 32.3 centimeters long, around 14 centimeters deep, and 5.6 centimeters thick, so it's clearly made for larger tower cases with plenty of space. It is a really well-built card too. Uh, the shroud itself is plastic, but it's actually quite sturdy. And while the backplate feels like it's typical metal, it is actually made of graphene, which is a lighter but stronger material. And it's actually better for heat dissipation. If you're familiar with the 10 or 20 series Gaming X Trio cards, the overall look will be familiar as well, but there are definitely some obvious differences like the RGB on the front and the larger RGB strip on the back of the card, but they did keep the neutral black and grey color scheme that will go really well with most builds out there. The RGB will be controllable through the Mystic Light software and you will be able to sync this card with your motherboard and your other components but unfortunately I could not get the latest version in time for this review so I didn't get a chance to test that. In terms of features of the card itself, uh, there isn't that much going on here. MSI's marketing points out the new fan design, uh, the extra large heat pipe and the airflow deflectors to improve the airflow. And I'll guess we'll see how effective they all actually are later on in this review when we get to the thermal results of this card. There is still a fan stop feature, of course, uh, which will stop the fans when the GPU doesn't really have much to do, which I think is a great feature as it doesn't just keep the card completely quiet in light use, but it also prevents the fans from wearing out in the long run. The one thing that's out of the ordinary is that they went with a three 8-pin connectors. MSI will probably argue that this is for those extreme overclocking scenarios as this RTX 3080 by default has a 320 watt TDP and technically you'll need a third 8-pin once you pass 375 watts. But not all power supplies can handle that, so you will want to get a high-quality 650-watt or higher power supply that also has three PCIe connectors. So keep that in mind, and keep in mind the fact that you will have more cables to manage as a result of that. But when it comes to connections, uh, you get three DisplayPort uh, 1.4 ports and a single HDMI 2.1 port. So good news if you want to uh, build a gaming rig for your 4K OLED TV, for example, or you plan on getting a new high refresh rate 4K monitor. But let's finally get to what you guys care about the most here the performance of this card. If you want to see all the detailed results on how the RTX 3080 compares to other chips, just check out my original review. Uh, it will pop up somewhere here. It is a bit long, but you can actually use the uh, chapters in the description to jump straight to the performance part and skip all the parts that you're not really interested in. But to summarize, on 4K resolution, uh, you can expect every single game to be playable above 60 FPS, at high settings and then with RTX on, assuming you enable DLSS as well. Some games like Doom Eternal or Shadow of the Tomb Raider will even run at over 100 FPS on 4K. 
On 1440p, this card will make a great use of those high refresh rate 144Hz and 165Hz monitors that have become pretty much mainstream lately. Uh, expect to play every game at highest of settings and high refresh rates. On 1080p, the RTX 3080 is usually an overkill. I mean, the results are really impressive, but you really don't need that much power for a smooth experience, unless you're a competitive player. Because if you are a competitive player on a 240 Hertz monitor or looking to buy one of the new 360 Hertz monitors, it is worth knowing that this 3080 does do better than 20 series cards. On average, I saw about 2% performance increase using the Gaming X Trio over the NVIDIA Founders Edition card. And uh, this is completely due to the 1980 MHz boost speed of this particular sample versus the 1917 on the FE and 1927 on the Asus Top card. It is actually a very good result, but since uh, boost speeds will vary from sample to sample, I would say it is really too early to say if uh, MSI is using better bin chips for these cards or if I just got really lucky with my particular sample. Now, seeing that the power consumption is actually very similar between these cards, it kind of seems likely that this card just got a slightly better chip. Time will tell if this is consistent among all Gaming X Trio cards or not, but for now, it's just not fair to suggest that if you buy this card, it will be faster than the competition. And I would say either way, 2% is not really something you would notice while gaming anyways. What you will notice is that the Gaming X Trio is both cooler and quieter than the NVIDIA Founders Edition design. Now, NVIDIA had a really good result actually, but this Gaming X Trio just does better. Similar to previous generations, uh, MSI is choosing lower noise levels over lower temperatures, uh, while Asus, on the other hand, with their tough model, decided to push for lower temperatures instead, uh, causing it to run a little bit louder, but a little bit cooler. I don't think that either choice is objectively better than the other. It will mostly just come down to what you personally prefer. Would you like your GPU to be a bit cooler or would you like it to be a bit quieter? Uh, it's not like that either result is bad. MSI slightly higher temps are still completely fine and slightly higher noise levels from Asus still don't make it loud. It's just that the Asus is exceptionally cool while the MSI is exceptionally quiet. And when I fix the fan speed to 40 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, uh, that is what I would consider an acceptable noise level while gaming, uh, both cards actually show a very, very similar result and a very good result. Now, Nvidia's Founders Edition model doesn't do bad either, but these bigger cards are just obviously better. In the end, there's basically two main reasons why you would go with this Gaming X Trio. You either really like the looks of it, or you just want something that runs cooler and quieter than cheaper alternatives out there. I don't have exact prices yet, and I actually expect prices to be all over the place in the coming weeks, uh, as I kind of think demand will probably outweigh the supply here. But you should expect it to cost more than the NVIDIA Founders Edition or other smaller alternatives on the market. Now, right now, I'm seeing that some shops suggest a $60 or 60 euro price premium for this uh, Gaming X Trio, while the Asus Stuff Card will cost even more. And I really don't think that, you know, that's that's a bad price considering the design of this card and the overall performance. So if that is true, this card will definitely be a great choice for everyone. Uh, just make sure you grab a proper power supply to match it. Now, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this new card. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to never miss a video and give me a like on this one. Bye guys.